Welcome to this training session on the Garmin Apollo GPS, hosted by yours truly, Major Updraft. Our objective, to understand the basics of a parallel grid search, configure the GPS, and then demonstrate navigating to, entering, and searching an assigned grid. A review of aircraft configuration and hazards is available on video 5A, but a quick reminder, there are inherent dangers to flying low and slow in the areas not specifically designed and cleared for arrival and departure of aircraft. In other words, if you are low and slow and not landing or taking off at a public airport, use extreme caution. The parallel search is based on the grid system and defines search areas that assist in both coordinating and directing search efforts. The Garmin GX series GPS incorporates the grid database divided into groups based on aviation sectional charts. For our demonstration, we will be using the Atlanta sectional. An excellent detailed discussion on the grid system can be found at the following website. You can find the link below in the video description. A tip on how to remember the grid layout. The four quadrants, A, B, C, and D, read like words in a book, left to right. Numbers are used to further clarify a specific corner of one quadrant, in this case, quadrant D, in this order, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they proceed the same way as you would read a clock, in a circular clockwise motion. Since the GX series GPS has the SAR package installed, its database includes grid parameters as per their assigned number. There are two functions available for navigating this information. First, we will navigate to the entry waypoint of our desired grid. To do this, we define the grid entry point as a user waypoint. To do this, we'll simply go to Nav Database, a couple clicks to the right, and we'll find Create User Waypoint by US Grid, and hit Enter. We're going to go to Grid 238. Attempt to dial that in here. We're going to go to Quadrant Charlie, which will be the bottom left quadrant of the grid. We're going to go to the third corner of that quadrant, which will be the bottom right. We can see these lat longs are roughly in the Atlanta area, assuring me that I'm defining this on the Atlanta sectional, not one of the alternate sectionals. But enter. Now that that point is a user waypoint, I can use it in a flight plan or choose to go direct to it. In this case, I'll use the nearest button. We'll scroll through to the nearest user waypoint, which is 283 Charlie 3. And hit direct and enter. That'll get us navigating. I can come to our map and see the aircraft is positioned at Fulton County Airport. Got our line drawn to 238 Charlie 3, and I can get some motion going on the simulator. I have a bearing of 255, and it's only 5 miles away. This is navigating me to what will be point zero on our grid map. However, we don't have that map up yet, so we need to move to the second step. We need to set up our search grid parameters and navigation. To do that, let's go to our SAR page, we'll hit pattern, and let it know we want to do a parallel search. It's bringing up the nearest grid, which is close to what I need, but I'm going to have to hit the select button there and change this to Charlie, and change this to 3. I'm going to go to one mile spacing, and I'm going to change this to east-west. Enter to agree to east-west, and then hit enter again to agree to the whole package here. That's going to take away my navigation to that, to that first point. If I show our grid here, and it's going to start navigating me to no longer point zero in the grid, but it's going to navigate me to point one, the end of the first grid line. So that's going to require a bit of adjustment on my part, and I'm going to 
zoom in here so that I can just see enough of zero and we'll continue our track towards point zero. So it's an important difference to make that we're no longer navigating to point zero with the GPS but we're close enough that we can easily do it just visually on the map screen. We could actually skip that first step of navigating to point zero and go ahead and tell it we want to do a parallel search and then just be navigating to point one. So I'm going to be making my turns with the goal of being set up on heading, on course, by the time we enter at point zero. By having the GPS set for track up, that'll make this job quite a bit easier because with my scan I can just make sure those lines are pointed straight up and down. So we're entering at point zero. At this point, I'm going to have my mission observer call in and let uh, Ops Base know that we have entered grid 238, Charlie. That puts us both on the same page and any other aircraft in the area can hear where I'm at and we can deconflict if necessary. Of course I want to make sure I'm at my correct configuration with flaps at 10 degrees and I'm scanning the area for other aircraft while my mission observer and my mission scanner in the back are looking out the left and right of the aircraft. As I approach the end of my first grid line, I'm going to have to make a decision. Am I going to extend through that line and make my turn outside of this grid quadrant? Or am I going to make my turn early and stay in that grid quadrant? Most times you'll fly out, like we'll do here, and re-enter. However, if I know there's conflicting traffic in a nearby quadrant, I may want to stay in my quadrant alone just to deconflict and make sure there isn't a conflict. Message is telling us we're getting close. And I am slightly off track, and I can tune in. Oops. I can dial in my uh, map here a little bit to see a little bit more precise. and make corrections as necessary. As I exit this first grid, I'll go ahead and let my crew know that we're out of the grid. That'll allow them to take a chance to relax their eyes and be ready for the next grid. So you can see that the GPS has cycled. I'm now going to point two, and I'm going to go ahead and make my right turn for one mile spacing, standard rate should be adequate. And again, my goal will be to be lined up on course, making any wing correction as necessary, and following the next track. Now, if there's a lot of winds aloft, this particular map page does not have ground track information, which can be very valuable. So what we can do is scroll and use this map page that gives us the data as well as the map. That's going to make our lives a little bit easier, especially now that we're in the groove and we're starting our second one. Advising my crew, eyes outside, we're in the grid. And note that we're not calling base ops every time we enter and exit during our 180 degree turn. This is simply for our own purposes. Great, I'm set up, I'm tracking 093, my bearing 093, I'm on my way to point three, and the rest is all procedure. We'll just work our way down through the grid lines and be uh, looking for any activity outside. I encourage you to subscribe to the Major Updraft channel in order to catch future training videos. Thanks for watching, and remember, knowledge and proficiency promotes safe flying.